Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, a while back I mentioned to you I'm going to be shooting the ways of this uh, machine with an auto collimator, which is a kind of a telescope looking device that helps you determine how flat and straight something is. Uh, but to do it, I needed something for a mirror to ride on that I can slide down the ways. Uh, so what I ended up doing was I made a little wooden pattern for uh, this little piece right here. And I sent it off to my buddy Clark Easterling over at Windy Hill Foundry. He was kind enough to uh, get this thing cast for me and sent back. And today our job is gonna be machining this to get it to fit in here. So let me zoom you in here and kind of show you what we got. And we'll talk about our game plan. So you can kind of see what we got here in the casting. Basically, I have two feet, and these are a certain distance apart. Uh, there's a formula that you determine for, with the auto collimator on how far apart those feet need to be based upon the length of the whatever you're shooting. And uh, we did the math, figured out what that should be. And uh, of course, this has just got 45s in it that fits right down into my ways, and we can slide this back and forth. The idea here being that when it's, we do it all, everything will be nice and flat and true to the ways, and we'll have a nice uh, platform that we can put that mirror on and take that mirror for a ride down the, uh, the bed uh, to shoot this with. Now, for this, yeah, I could have uh, got a piece of Durabar and machined this out. I actually priced a piece of Durabar, and it was going to be quite expensive. And I uh, knew that I could just get a casting done cheaper than I could buy the material and have a lot more machining to do. So I came out here one Saturday, probably about a month or so ago, and I didn't shoot a video on it. it was, I was in kind of a hurry and just needed to get it done. But uh, I made a wooden pattern. Basically, I had a flat piece uh, this thickness here. I cut out the, the two uh, feet and this little center rib here, just glued them all on there. Made sure I had the draft and all that in there, sent it to Clark and uh, Clark took care of the rest. And uh, he sent me back a nice casting here that we can now work with. So we're gonna go over to the mill machine. Uh, first thing I think I'm gonna do is get the top uh, flat and that will give me a reference surface that I can then start on to start milling the other uh, pieces on here. Once we get all that done, we will take it to the surface grinder, grind it uh, to, to match what we have down here. And uh, let's go do it, let's get started. It's kind of an awkward piece to uh, clamp here. I ended up having to go get an extra vise and put it on here. It was just a little bit too narrow to, to, to put in between on one. And anyway, I just grabbed another vise. We clamped it up on here. That should give us nice st uh, stability there. And basically all I'm gonna do here is just get this top to clean up. And uh, once we do that, we'll start working on the other side. So let's, uh, let's get started. Just gonna lightly mill this first pass. I don't know how even this is gonna be. Anytime I'm doing a casting, I try to take that first pass kind of light just simply because I don't know how much material uh, or if there's where high spots are and so forth. I hate to go in there and start a real heavy cut and then things get thicker as I go. This way at least I have a known reference to start with. I'll just dial in about 25. We'll come back across this.
think we got her done. That's got the top flat anyway. All right, let's uh, work on getting these sides cleaned up next. Making this next side square, I decided to uh, just go ahead and do it over here on the horizontal milling machine. So we got this clamped down flat. Of course, the surface we just did is on the bottom. And uh, this right here should give us a nice 90 degree uh, finish on that one side over there. We'll, uh, get things ready to go here. Feed in until it starts cutting. Do about a 50 thou cut. Moved in, lock the table, and feed across. I should get it. Nice and clean. Back over to the uh, vertical mill now. I've got it turned up where it's basically sitting on that bottom we just did and up against the, uh, the jaw, the fixed jaw back here uh, with the other machine surface. This should give us a parallel cut. I'm not so much worried about being square. I am worried about being square, but I want it to be parallel to the other side as well, uh, which is why we're doing it this way. Uh, I could easily cut it square on the, on the horizontal, but I really wouldn't have any guarantee that they would be parallel to one another, but this should make sure we do that. So um, let's uh, come across here and make a pass. Mostly cleaned up. I'm going to take another probably 30 or 40 thou off of it. That should get it. So now I want to mill the 45s on the bottom. And to do that, I got some uh, 90 degree angle blocks in here and we've just got everything clamped down on to that. We've just got to mill the ends here. So I got it clamped down in the center and uh, we won't be able to go side to side. We'll have to kind of move the table around it, but uh, I think we can do that just fine. Get them on the same level and we'll clean everything else up when we get over on the grinder. Uh, it hasn't got to be just perfect, but we want to get it as close as we can. So let's uh, let's start there. Go to the other side. deeper cut.
All right, that's got that side cleaned up. I'm gonna flip it over now and we'll do the other side. I'll do that one off camera. I'm set up over here on the surface grinder now. We're gonna start uh, grinding this in. Uh, nice thing about the surface grinder is that I've got these magnetic B blocks that I can mess mag things down with. These are just transfer blocks. So the magnetic flux from the truck comes up through this and uh, basically just mags down right in there. So for this piece here, pretty much, uh, uh, or most of my grinds are gonna require that 45 degree uh, angles in there, so it's gonna come in real handy. Let's uh, touch off here, and uh, we're gonna grind the top first. There we go. Just gonna kind of fish around here, make sure I'm not gonna crash anywhere. I suspected that was my highest spot over there. Well, it was gonna, I think it's gonna be pretty good all the way across. So let's, uh, we'll just go ahead and cut on across there. Doing this side, you can tell what I've done here is I've flipped it up over. I've still got these magnetic blocks in the back, and I'm using that to kind of grip on that surface we just uh, ground flat on the top. And it's also sitting on the bottom here. And uh, we're going to go across this. That's going to clean up pretty quick. I was about a thousandth cut on the first pass, and it's almost already cleaned up. So uh, I'll probably cut back across it again, dress it in. We'll flip it over and uh, get the other side parallel. All right, guys, here we go across the 45 ways. We've got it up in the transfer V-blocks again. And we'll cut this first side and flip it over to the other side. This part's been a little bit challenging just from all the geometry involved, but uh, Nothing too terrible bad. cleaned up with just a little bit back here on this back corner. It's really almost out of the area that it's going to be touching anyway. I think I'm going to make another pass across and then we're just going to call it good. Whatever we got is what we got. It's going to have to be good. And just like that, we got this all milled and ground and finished. Fits wonderfully. 
slides nice in here. I can see it pushing up some dust and what have you, so that tells me it's nice fit in there. So anyway, that's what we're shooting for. And again, what we're doing is uh, putting a auto collimator mirror on here. And uh, what we will do is we will just slide this down in various places. We will shoot the mirror with the auto collimator and we can measure distant or differences in the angle between the front and the back of this. And from that, using some mathematical calculations or whatever, I can map out and know exactly what's going on with each one of these ways. And I'm actually measuring it in the V ways rather than on top. You know, when we leveled the machine, we were on the tops of the Vs, but this way we're down in the bottoms. And uh, that's gonna give us a more accurate uh, indication as to what's going on. So, uh, in fact, I could even put a, 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 a level on the top of this and do some stuff with that as well. So, I got some options for this little sled. It, uh, it should be a nice little tool to help me figure out what's going on here. So, to get ready to scrape this machine in. Well, there you go. Another step here on the metal planer restoration. Yes, this was not directly related to the actual restoration, but it is a piece that we need as part of the puzzle to finish this job up. And uh, it turned out very nice. I'm very happy with it. Um, again, we could have made this out of a piece of Durabar or something like that. Been a lot more machining. The casting option was actually a little bit cheaper than even buying the raw material and uh, saved me a lot of work. So it really worked out well. And having a source like uh, uh, Clark over at Windy Hill Foundry who can uh, take a pattern, send me back a casting pretty quickly and pretty economically is, uh, is a nice option to have. So anyway, thought you'd enjoy that. And uh, with that, we're gonna call that a wrap on this video. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and uh, comments are appreciated. Catch you on the next video.